Notion has just released an absolutely game-changing new feature. In fact, without any hyperbole, I can say that this is the feature I have been asking them to build for the longest period of time, and I am absolutely stoked that it's finally available for all of us to use. So this feature is called Group By, and it allows you to visually separate rows in your database views by pretty much any property. So here, I've got a list of tasks that I have now visually separated by the person those tasks are assigned to. And here I've got a board view where I've grouped by the status of those tasks in one direction and by the assignee in the other direction. This is called swim lanes. And for my favorite example, here I have a list of video ideas in my content tracker. And I can finally, finally group by relations to other databases, in this case, my channels database. So I now have a vertical column for every single one of my YouTube channels and blogs. It's so cool that I could almost cry. So what this video is going to be is a breakdown of exactly how to use this new feature across your workspace. You will be an expert in grouping by across all your databases by the time you finish watching this. We are gonna go through a sample database that I've created to show you exactly how to use it. And then I'm gonna show you three different examples of how we are actually using this new feature in our workspace for our content strategy and planning. So if you happen to be a content creator, these examples will be especially applicable to you and your business. In fact, they are also built into my new Notion template, which is called Creator's Companion, and it is literally a templatized recreation of our exact system that we use to run my YouTube channels, my blogs, and basically every media outlet that forms my gigantic media empire. So more on that at the end of the video, but first let's get into the examples and the tutorial. Okay, so here I have a very simple task manager that I have built with a list of tasks. And then down here, we have a list of projects. And if you've ever used my ultimate tasks task manager template for Notion, this will look pretty familiar to you. If you haven't, there's a link in the description down below that happens to be free, so check it out. But we have a bunch of tasks here, and most of these tasks are associated to a project via a relation type property. But we also have an assignee column, we have a status column, a due date, and then we have one very simple formula which simply tells us is the task task late or is it on time? And it's late if it is past the due date and not set to done. So right now, this is currently sorted by the due date, but all these different tasks are sort of jumbled together. We have tasks for multiple different projects. We have some tasks that don't even have projects, but what we can actually do now is group via that relation in the actual task table. So if I switch over my default view here to this table projects view, you will see that I now have all of my tasks grouped by their project. Here's the channel branding project. Here's the sales page redesign project. Here's my skyboarding certification project that I'm totally doing. And this is a really great way to see all of your different tasks on one screen, but have them visually separated by their project. So what's going on under the hood here? Well, if we come up to our little three dot menu, and we come down to this new little grouping option, we can see everything going on here. So we're now choosing to group by our project and we're sorting uh, manually instead of alphabetically. And then we can choose to hide or show things. So let's actually go ahead and do this over on the default view where we didn't have a grouping before. So I'm gonna come back to three dot menu here, go to the group option right here. And we're going to choose to group by one of our properties. Now we can group by a lot of different properties. Note that even the late formula property is available for grouping. But right now I'm gonna choose the project, which is a relation type property. Again, this is my favorite addition. Uh, being able to group by relation is immensely powerful and I'm gonna be using it in a lot of different places within Notion. So we've chosen project and by default, our sort is going to be alphabetical and we can come in here and we can choose either that reverse alphabetical or my favorite manual because alphabetical doesn't usually help me. I wanna see the most important projects first. So let's just say the sales page redesign is actually more important than channel branding. So I'll switch those uh, around like that. We can hide things. So if we wanted to hide tasks that didn't have a project, we could do that. I think for a task manager, we would actually want to see tasks that didn't have a project. So we could maybe assign them a project or simply see things that you know don't have a project, little one-off tasks. And we can also choose to hide empty groups if we want to. So if we had a project that had no task in it, we could hide them uh, and that would be all hunky-dory. 
And that is pretty much it for creating a grouping inside the table view. You will note that if you have filter and sort criteria, it's going to apply to basically all these groups. So right now I'm sorting by the due date in ascending order. So we have due date sorting inside of our little mini groups. So now I wanna show you the changes to the board view because this is probably where the biggest changes have happened and also where we can see uh, subgrouping, which is a really cool feature as well. So here we have a totally normal everyday board view. The only thing that you may have uh, not seen before is that we now have a different color that is sort of surrounding the entire column. And that is something you can actually turn off or on if you want to. Uh, but one other thing you can do is add this little subgrouping here. So currently, if we look at group, we are grouping by the status property. This is one of the three old school properties that you've always been able to group by. So if we really wanted to, we could change this over to uh, do if we wanted to. And now we have last seven days, uh, today, tomorrow, next seven days, or we could group by the project if we wanted to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on status. One thing I may also want to do is group these different tasks by their project in addition to seeing the status columns here. So if I go to my three dot menu here and I choose this subgroup option, I can come up here and I can choose project. And what this is going to do is transform my board view into this sort of grid where I have my normal columns for to do, doing, done. I also have no status, which I actually want to go ahead and hide here. But what I also have are rows where I can see the different projects that each task is associated with. So I get both the status and the project, which is super useful. In the old board view, we used to have um, all of our different projects and sort of jumbled together inside of the columns and we couldn't even column by the project itself. So this is super, super useful. Now, if I go back to my subgroup settings here, you're gonna see that I can actually change the same settings that I was able to change with the normal groupings. So I don't wanna go by alphabetical, I would rather go by manual. And I'm going to go ahead and move my channel branding, sales page redesign and skyboarding certification up to the top so I can see project specific tasks first. I might wanna do that. So this is an incredibly useful view. And like I said before, when we're choosing our properties for uh, how to group our different tasks or rows here, we don't just have to choose from selects and multi-selects and person properties anymore. We have a ton of different choices. So let me show you a few more sample views that I've created here. So here we have a table that is grouped by the assignee. So if you're a project manager or just a manager in general, you can see all the different tasks assigned to each person on your team. Here's Martin's tasks, here's Tony's one task, uh, and we have nothing for no assignee here. We also have one here for date. So now we have groupings for last seven days, today, tomorrow, things like that. And date is actually an interesting one. If we go back to the grouping settings here and we uh, once again choose do, we can see that we have some different little sub options here. So we can use relative grouping. We can go by the actual day, the actual week, the actual month. I'll just go by week here to show you an example of how that looks. So now we have specific week groupings here. In fact, one person recently emailed me about creating these uh, specific week groupings where it starts on Sunday, ends on uh, Saturday. This is how you can do that. So that's pretty cool. And we also have some board views. So here's one where we have the project, again, a relation type property as our main grouping, but then we're also grouping by assignees in the subgrouping areas. So we can see all the tasks that I have been assigned across all these different projects, pretty useful. I do wanna show you a few more because you can also group by in the list view. So here is my list view with a uh, relation grouping. We can do it in the gallery view. So same thing, just gallery, but also grouped by project. And we can also do it in the timeline view. So this is gonna be, again, really useful for project managers. If you wanna see the timeline for individual projects and still sort by those due dates, this is exactly how you can do it. So from here, let's switch over to those three different examples of how we're actually using this feature in my business. And this is probably my favorite one. Like I said before, I have been asking Notion for the ability to group by relations inside of board views for a very long time. And now we finally have that. So this is the content ideas area of our copy of Creators Companion. And in the past, I used to have to use this little interim select property that I called proposed channel. And I had like Thomas Frank YouTube, Thomas Frank Explains, and then I would have to actually set the relation later on. But now I am grouping by the channel. So whenever I have an idea, I can simply come into the channel where I want that idea to go, like right here, maybe a video on uh, what is building a second brain. And that is 
automatically associated with that channel. And I go in here and one thing this has allowed me to do, and this is something I've added to the template for this release, is add a little ideas area for the channel itself. And you will notice that what is building a second brain is now listed inside this channel. And if I want to, I can go ahead and further organize these ideas by tagging them. So what is building a second brain? That is gonna be something that is more productivity focused. So I'll go ahead and put it in there. And then if I head back, to my little idea board for all my different channels, I can switch over to a tag view and inside of productivity, I have what is building a second brain. So this is insanely useful, this ability to group by relations. Next up, I wanna show you our brand new project manager view. So this is the homepage of our copy of Creators Companion. And as you can see, I have many different channels here and I could see the content specific to those channels if I wanted to inside there, but we also have a project manager view where we can see everything going on across the entire business. And it used to be kind of a jumbly mess because we didn't have a, the ability to create these swim lanes, but now we do, so we have our entire content pipeline, so planning stage, research stage, writing stage, and so on. But we also have our channels doing the subgrouping here. So I can see everything going on for the Thomas Frank YouTube channel. I can come down here and I can see everything going on for the Thomas Frank Explains channel. So I have this really nice visual separation between these two channels and I can just sort of hone in and see only what's going on in one channel at a time if I want to without having to go to some other page. And to give you a look at how the settings look here, we can just go to our groupings and see that we're grouping by status. We have colored the columns uh, turned on, which is nice. You can turn it off if you really want to, but I like to have it on and we have a few different things hidden like ideas on hold needs update those are hidden and then we can also look at our subgrouping settings to see that channel is our subgrouping selection for the property we are sorting manually and i have dragged my most important channels or i guess most used channels up to the top here and if i really wanted to i could go ahead and change this at will and that would be pretty useful and while we're on this project management page, I also wanna show you how we're using this new feature for task management. So if I go to my little on-page navigation and zoom down to content tasks. So before all of our content tasks, you could actually see them separated if we went into the content project, but here they would sort of be all jumbled up. And using this grouping, where you're grouping again by the content relation, we can see all the tasks related to a specific video. And I can come down here and see all the tasks related to yet another video. So this is another very useful uh, use case for this new grouping feature. And coming back to our homepage here, I wanna show you one little beta feature that I'm now creating using this, which is this little page called Writer's Room. So one thing that I would like to do is sort of create pages for the different departments of my company. So people who are doing writing should have a page where they only need to focus on things that need to be written right now. They don't see anything else. So if I come in here, we can create this little writer's room and we can only see, if we look at the filter criteria here, projects where the status is either research or writing. And using our little swim lanes, we can create a Kanban board with the assignees as our main grouping here. So I have me, I've got Ransom, I've got Martin. We are the three people in the company who do writing for all of our content. And then in our subgrouping, I've got my channels. So Thomas Frank, Thomas Frank Explains, so on. And so I can go ahead and assign writers. And uh, if somebody is a writer on my team, they can just simply come to the writer's room and they can see here is exactly what I need to do across any channels that I am working on. So hopefully these examples we've gone through have given you some ideas for how you can use this in your own workspace. We are using this in quite a few different areas of ours and it's very helpful so far. And uh, I will be having a blog post up on my website with some more reference information and a fuller tutorial on how to do all this stuff as soon as I can. And if you are a content creator, if you are a YouTuber or a podcaster or a blogger and you are interested in checking out Creators Companion, it is actually now live in beta. Like I said before, this is a templatized version of the exact system we use to manage all of my channels and web properties. So my social media channels, my main YouTube channel, this YouTube channel, our podcast when we were running it, our blogs, everything goes through this one Notion template that takes us from the idea generation stage to the project management and planning stage and also serves as a very useful archive so we can go and we can review our content and we can see how we can do better in the future. It's all in one system. And we had intended on launching fully this month and bumping the price up to the full price. But as it turns out, I am going to LA 
delay tomorrow for like three different video collabs with a bunch of other YouTubers that I did not expect. So I will not have time to do all the crazy marketing work around that launch. And my busyness is your gain. This is the last time that Creators Companion is going to be in beta, which means if you wanna check it out, you're gonna be able to get it at the lowest price it's ever going to be at. Once again, that'll be in the uh, description down below. Check it out if you're curious, but otherwise, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have questions about this new feature or Notion in general, leave them down in the comments below or over on Twitter. I'm Tom Frankly there. I love answering questions on Twitter. That's probably the social network where I am the most active. So follow me if you haven't already, ask me your questions. And last but not least, if you haven't done so already, you might want to consider getting on my Notion Tips email newsletter. I've got the link right there and you don't have to, but people who are on my newsletter find out first about my new templates and I'm working on a brand new note-taking template right now. So they're going to find out about it first, as well as new tutorials and content that I put out. And if you're on my newsletter, I will send you a link to all of my free templates, as well as all the supplemental resources and example stuff for Notion Fundamentals, which is my beginner series on how to learn Notion. So if that interests you, get on the newsletter. You're going to find out about all the cool stuff before it comes out on YouTube or Twitter or whatever. And beyond that, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.